Welcome to the Dr. Mudgill Podcast. This is episode 129. We are getting a little bit deeper into May here. Mother's Day is upon us this weekend, so a very, very happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful mamas out there. Um, don't have much of a Mother's Day planned on this end, but you know my, my boys uh, both play hoops, and one of my sons has a basketball tournament in Jersey, so uh, we'll be spending a bunch of a Mother's Day there. Uh, hopefully my my uh, son brings home a win for mama on Mother's Day, and uh, you know his teammates do the same for their mamas. Um, but you know, hopefully we'll 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 get back. Hopefully not too late, and, and be able to get a little celebration going for you know my beautiful wife, who's the matriarch of the Mudgill family, and we're very blessed to have her as our leader. Um, so listen, uh, this podcast a lot to talk about. First of all, how about the Knicks? So we are in the second round of the playoffs, and we are two and zero. We played Indy. I was actually blessed to take my three kiddos to the game, to game one of this series on Monday night. And uh, one of my um, close friends um, was very kind and and uh, gave me some tickets because he was out of town and we had like honestly spectacular seats right below the rim. Um, it was just an incredible, it was an incredible experience for a dad who's a big Knicks fan, a lifelong Knicks fan to share with his three kiddos. And it was an awesome game. Uh, Knicks pulled it out. And uh, they won again last night. So hopefully by the time we are all watching this or listening to this podcast, the Knicks will be leading in the series 3 now. We're playing, we're going to Indy, and we're, the next game is on uh, Friday night. It's Thursday today. So um, let's go Knicks. But this podcast uh, actually is, uh, well, it's kind of a Knicks-themed podcast. I've actually been watching a ton of basketball uh, these last few weeks. I'm sure many of you have as well, but not only on like the professional level, you know, I've been watching the playoffs. I've been watching the Knicks and the other teams as well. Uh, but I've actually been watching my boys play a ton of basketball. Um, they're 14 and 12. They're very involved in uh, AAU basketball. And, um, you know, basically all our weekends are basically consumed going to games, watching, watching basketball games, et cetera. And it's interesting, you know, I've actually been like between watching them and watching professional basketball, um, I've really been thinking a ton about teamwork and how teamwork makes the dream work. Um, and it's, it's actually, it's, uh, it's so, you know, what happens on the court, um, there's so many parallels to what happens in like, you know, in life, you know, in your family life, uh, in your professional life. And uh, I just would like to take a few moments to reflect on that. Um, so first, the Knicks, I love the Knicks, um, and the Knicks have just had an amazing season this year. It's been an incredible story. You know, they've had tons of injuries. You know, their uh, uh, you know their their leader, you know, Brunson is uh, incredible. I mean, just an absolutely incredible player. I mean, I don't think anyone could have predicted how amazing he would, he would be with the Knicks, but he is just absolutely incredible. Um, but a lot of our other scorers and other like you know the other members of our team have gone down with injuries this season. You know Julius Randle was a big part of our offense and just a big part of the team. Got injured and you know he's been out for you know a great bulk of the season out for the playoffs. You know we've had a bunch of injuries like in the playoffs going into the playoffs. You know Mitchell Robinson, our center, has had injuries throughout the season. He's out now for the rest of the playoffs. He hurt uh, I think he hurt his ankle or something like that or some kind of uh, strain or fracture in his foot something like that. Um, even in yesterday's game, um, Jalen Brunson hurt his foot. He was out for the entire second quarter. Um, uh, OG Ananobi, who was having like literally a career amazing game at 28 points in the first half, got injured, and uh, he was out for the rest of the game. Hopefully, he comes back and is able to you know come back to the team uh, Friday. But I think his status is unknown. Um, but despite that, you know the Knicks are running a really really small roster. Um, and despite that, you know, we've had a tremendous amount of success in these playoffs. And it's interesting, you know, like the, some, the core three players of our starting lineup actually all played college basketball together. Like Villanova, Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, and uh, Dante DiVincenzo. Um, they, uh, they have a history. They have a history of playing together and performing well together. And you can actually see that when they're playing. Uh, you know, there's like just some unspoken things. Like they just kind of know where each other are going to be on the court, you know, these sort of like blind passes and, you know, someone makes a cut and, you know, it's sort of, you know, it's like the sixth sense that they have with each other. And 
it really kind of sheds a lot of light into, you know, how this team, the Knicks, are so rife with injuries and, you know, really um, have been performing, you know, incredibly well during during these playoffs. And, you know, a lot of that falls on Jalen Brunson's shoulders, who's just been out of this world. But everyone is contributing. And, you know, when someone's not contributing, someone else steps up. And it really is just an amazing collective. As a team, the performance has just been so outstanding. It's, you know, every game you feel like you're on the verge of, of uh, you know, having a heart attack, you're having palpitations. You know, the games are all kind of going down to the wire, but, you know, they just pull it out. It's amazing how they're able to do this time and time again, even, you know, with such a short roster and all the injuries that they're facing. And, you know, I think a lot of it is that core three who've been playing basketball, you know, for many, many years together. Um, you know, when you're in college with folks, I'm sure you guys remember when you were back in college, the bonds you form are incredibly deep, incredibly strong. And, uh, you know, Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, like these guys have been together for years and years. Although they went, you know, separate paths after college, I'm sure they all stayed in touch and they've reunited with the Knicks. And you're just witnessing this teamwork, this magic happen. And, um, you know, it's interesting when I, when, you know, with that, in that context, um, my younger guy, my younger son, who's 12 years old, has been part of uh, the same AAU team, you know, for the most part. You know, there's a couple of players have swapped out through the years. But they've actually been playing together for a few years. And whereas my middle guy, when you get older, you know, the team's kind of like split up and some folks go to different organizations. So, you know, my son's team kind of has, my middle guy's has, team has changed quite a bit. Um, and this year it's pretty much a, a new team, kids that he has never really played with. And watching his two teams, watching my little guy's team and my middle guy's team, you know, you can really see the differences. You know, my little guy's team who've been together for years, he's 12, you know, some of them have been playing together since they were nine years old. And, um, you know, there's not like once, they, and they perform very well, you know, they won, the, they won their tournament last weekend. It's, it's so much fun to watch them. But the most fun thing to watch about them is there's not like one person who's like dominating the scoring. You know, there's a couple of guys who are like real hustle players, diving for the ball, getting rebounds, you know, just like, you know, always like charged up on defense and getting steals. And, uh, you know, the scoring is pretty equally divided, you know, with, with all the kids on the team, even the kids who come off the bench. Um, everyone contributes. And everyone contributes differently each game. You know, there's always like someone else who's kind of stepping up when someone else is having an off day or just, you know, the shooting is not going well or, you know, something is off or the defense is a little bit off. Someone always steps up. And a lot of it is this sort of this, this unspoken language that they share, you know, just from playing together so much through these years, you know, kind of similar to, I mean, obviously a different level, but, you know, kind of how like, you know, the three core Knicks players um, who've played together forever kind of know where each other are uh, on the court. It's very, it's a similar kind of vibe with my little guys, AAU team, you know, they just really vibe well together. They're all become very, very close friends through the years. Like, you know, they go to each other's birthday parties, they hang out and, you know, they all go to different schools so you know, they're not really in school together. But somehow they connect. You know, they always kind of find a way to connect with each other. They spend a ton of time together. You know, they have two practices a week. They have games on the weekends, um, and you can really see that bond that they share. You know, both on the court and off the court, and all of it kind of melds into one. It just makes them uh, a very cohesive unit, and they're just—it's amazing to watch them. And interestingly, my middle guys team is a pretty much like a new team this year. You know, a lot of the guys kind of you know either went to different organizations or the team you know got kind of like diluted a bit you know like some folks went to a different team within the same organization so he's playing with a bunch of new guys and this team has been together basically since the fall and you know in the beginning of the season it was you know they were they were struggling you know they really didn't have much chemistry and uh you know it's frustrating for my son you know he was actually had a good chemistry with his with his prior team they'd been together for a while so you know he was just trying to figure out everyone's you know strengths and weaknesses and you know how everyone contributes to the team differently and uh, you know i think all of us as parents were watching um we're like wow you know Mike, this is going to be pretty tough you know it's, it's it might be a pretty tough year but watching them develop over the course of this year so they started together in the fall and now they're you know into the spring season and um it's it's amazing you know it, how that how it the relationships you develop on your team and kind of everyone fulfills a different role how that just falls into place. Now, really, it takes, I do think it takes like years to really develop, you know, a real, you know, cohesive team and you kind of have this like unspoken language with each other. But um, even in those, you know, maybe six or seven months, I guess six months, I would say, that my middle guys team has been playing together, just the development is also, you know, you can, it's, it's very, very 
evident, you know, the way the team has started to gel and how like different folks are fulfilling uh, what their best role is for the success of the team. And, and it always brings me back to, you know, both like personal life and professional life, you know. Um, you know, as the years have gone on, even like, you know, so my family, that, you know, the te our teamwork has developed tremendously over the course of the years. You know, my wife and I each kind of know like what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are. And, you know, we lean into our strengths, you know, both of us lean into our strengths and we count on each other for, you know, whatever weaknesses we may, we may have to be the most cohesive parenting team that we can be. Um, it's the same in my office. You know, there are times where I have this, you know, I've had a few assistants throughout my career um, that have been just so above and beyond outstanding that just having them as part of my team, it just makes me a better doctor, you know? I'm not thinking about minutia, I'm not thinking about like, you know, small details because I know my team has my back and it's almost like, it, it, we, we have an unspoken language, like they know the instruments I need before I need them if I'm doing a surgery or you know, kind of can like, you know, they're one step ahead of me just because they're so experienced or they just know me so well or they're just so in tune and so intuitive with patient care and you know, in my career, those have been the absolute most pleasurable, best times um, for me as a physician, just because I really feel like I'm firing on all cylinders. I'm not worried about like minor details and minutia during the patient care visit. I'm purely focused on delivering the best possible care I can for my patient. And I know, well, I mean, and I always am, but, but I know like all these little details are taken care of. I don't need to, you know, use any neurons to cover those bases, you know, because I know there's someone that has my back that's basically filling in all these little details that I just don't need to worry about. Um, and, you know, of course, as I've mentioned in other podcasts, like you, the biggest stress in any small business is when you lose one of those key team players, you try to, you know, find someone else to fill that void. Um, but we always manage and we're always able to deliver great patient care regardless. It's just that sometimes it's so seamless. It's so much easier than, you know, times where, you're developing a new team or onboarding somebody. So um, the Knicks have really inspired me a bunch. They have me thinking about all sorts of stuff, but mostly how teamwork makes the dream work. When you're part of a solid team, um, your know, success is inevitable and success becomes somewhat effortless. So, you know, my goal always, um, you know, again, both personally and professionally is always try try to develop the strongest team dynamic possible because, you know, it just makes everything so much easier. It also makes everything so much more pleasurable. So with that, hope you all have a wonderful, restful weekend. Let's go Knicks. Um, happy Mother's Day again to all the beautiful moms out there. We all uh, have uh, just <laughs> tremendous uh, respect and we just adore all of the wonderful things that you all do for all of us. So happy Mother's Day. Have a wonderful weekend. Let's rest up and get ready to crush that week ahead. Let's get it.